While Wednesday night's contender series event gave the country a bit of a distraction as the presidential election vote count continues into a second day, it was bound to come up at some point with UFC President Dana White. Following DWCS Season 4. Week 8 at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Dana White spoke with members of the media to recap the night's festivities that led to four fighters Jared Vanderet, Luis Saldana, Ignacio Bahamans, and Carlos Ulberg becoming the newest members of the UFC roster. In addition, White, who has spoken multiple times on incumbent President Donald Trump's behalf, was asked about Democratic nominee Joe Biden's potential involvement in business operations should he be elected. I don't even think Biden knows who I am," White stated with a laugh to reporters including the Mac Life. I don't think Biden knows who Biden is. I had to do it. I don't think he'll come after us, but who knows? I don't know. In more of the local political races, former UFC light heavyweight champion and sometimes rival of White, Tito Ortiz, earned a seat on the Huntington Beach, Cali. City Council on Tuesday. Although White still may not be the biggest fan of the Huntington Beach bad boy, he still congratulated Ortiz on the beginnings of his political journey. Good for him White said. Good for him. One-time interim lightweight title challenger Kevin Lee just finished some serious ink on his head. Lee, who's currently recovering from a second torn ACL, posted a video of the finished piece two weeks after he teased the bold design on his Instagram page. It's been a tough year for Lee, who rebounded from a losing skid with a highlight reel knockout of Gregor Gillespie, only to be submitted by Charles Oliveira in March. Then he suffered the knee injuries that likely will keep him out of the octagon until well into next year. Despite the setbacks, Lee has kept an optimistic attitude. I feel like I've been on this path for a long ass time, like last 10 years, and I've seen a lot of this SHT happening he wrote after his second ACL injury. I didn't know I was going to have it, but I knew for sure it was going to happen. I guess God wants me to have two strong knees, so when I come back, I'm going to FCK somebody up. Lee currently stands at number 10 in the UFC lightweight rankings. Paulo Costa finally had his shot at the middleweight crown in September, but came up short against Israel Adesanya in Abu Dhabi, suffering his first MMA loss via second-round TKO at UFC 253. Boric Inha and his team were campaigning for an immediate rematch right after, but now have turned their focus to a title eliminator clash with former champion Robert Whittaker, since the last Stylevander is moving up to light heavyweight to challenge Jan Blachowicz. Costa went live on his YouTube channel on Tuesday night and said the Whitaker clash is in the works. Asked by a follower why he doesn't use his jiu-jitsu more often in the octagon, he went to say he shouldn't have entered the cage that day on Fight Island. Maybe I could have used more in the Adesanya fight, but many things happened before that fight Costa said. I don't like to talk because it might sound like an excuse, but I had no sleep, my leg was totally impaired, and I shouldn't have fought, I should have postponed it for the next weekend or more. I saw what happened with Patricky e. Frere, who fights for Bellator and has the same coach, Eric Albarison, and his team did the right thing. He didn't wake up well, had labyrinthitis on the day of the fight, feeling dizzy, so, he doesn't have to fight. We're at such a high level that you don't have to fight if you don't feel well. It was our mistake. Costa still wants to face Adesanya in the UFC, and vows it would end differently this time. He's an agile fighter, fast, but doesn't convince me. He didn't convince me Costa said about Asanya. It's hard to say, I lost to him and won't be right. I can say whatever I want and I won't be right, it will sound salty, but, in reality, he doesn't convince me. I can fight him 10 times and all 10 times will be different. The welterweight showdown between former title contender Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and Jeff Neal is currently in the works for the upcoming UFC card on December 19 in Las Vegas. Multiple sources confirmed the matchup to MMA fighting on Wednesday, with offers and verbal agreements in place for the fight. No contracts have been signed at this time. The news was initially reported by ESPN. Following a strong showing against Vicente Luke in his last outing, Thompson had been clamoring for a higher-ranked opponent, as he initially targeted a fight against Leon Edwards. That matchup never came together so obviously, Thompson moved on to the fight with Neil instead. Thompson has gone 2-2 in his past four fights, including a win over BMF champion Jorge Masvidal. As for Neil, the former Dana White contender series veteran has gone undefeated thus far in his UFC career, with a string of five straight wins. 
Neil holds knockout victories over Mike Perry and Nico Price, as well as a decision win over Belal Muhammad. Following his win over Perry, Neil had been asking for a chance to take a step forward in the welterweight rankings, and now it appears he'll get his chance with the fight against Wonderboy. Assuming the welterweight matchup is signed, Thompson vs Neil would join the card currently headlined by undefeated prospect Kamza Chimi, taking on Leon Edwards.